Hi all, good evening. My name is Debbie. I'm a Live for Love TV subscriber on YouTube. It's a very informative channel. So when you have a spare moment, please like, share and subscribe. Live for Love TV. Thank you. Welcome back to Live for Love TV. Today's the seventh day of the seventh month of the 22nd year inside the 21st century. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Now, 7-7 in the UK is infamous to some people, so condolences to those who that date brings back bad memories. But today, I'm going to talk a little bit about politics. Don't switch off. It's not going to be as bad as you think. Right now in the UK, we have a situation which is, I don't know if it's a, a comedy of errors, a farce, a play, or if it's actual reality. But the current Prime Minister, Mr Boris Johnson, it looks like almost everybody in his party or the majority of people in his party right now realise that his position is untenable. Two of the most powerful positions in his cabinet have, have gone. And last night, people were going into him, one after the other, to say, I think the time is up. I think it's time for you to leave. Now, even one of these people were Mr Michael Gove, who is a, a big hitter in the Conservative Party, apparently. And he said to Mr. Boris, he walked into Boris, he said, Boris, I think it's time you have to leave. And he said, OK. Boris looked at him and said, OK, you're sacked. Get out. So he's digging his heels in, Mr. Boris Johnson, which nobody can be surprised at. And what's hilarious is two or three weeks ago, these very people who were trying to tell him to leave voted for him to stay. They had an option to get rid of him and they voted for him to stay. Now, this man... Anybody who knows anything about history, anything about history, will realise that this man is a despot. Just like all the despots you've had around the world throughout history. He's one of these people where he's a power to himself. And for anybody not to have realised this until this time is absolutely hilarious. This man listens to nobody. It's even written in his school reports. And this is, the, this is what's so funny. When a man was in his teens, his school teacher literally said, this, this young boy doesn't listen to anyone. He's a law unto himself. And he's gone through the whole of his career doing the same thing, one day after, one after, one after another, till he gets to the top job, and now people are, are realising he doesn't listen to anybody. I mean, this goes to show you how, del how delusional most of us are, especially these people in politics. Anyway, we've seen all this before. It's, it, Boris Johnson right now, I don't know if he'll be in power by the time you see this, but he is actually a wounded animal right now. And we've seen wounded animals before. I mean, I'm old enough to remember 1979, 1981, where Margaret Thatcher had come into power, took on some of the uh, workers, and within no time she had three million people unemployed, a record at that time. And I was working in a place called St. Thomas, so I remember this clearly. And there were marches up and down the country, Maggie, 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 out, out, out. Maggie, 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 out, out, out. If you're old enough, you'll remember that. But what happened? She started to stir it up with the Argentinians, got herself into a battle, into a war, won that war, and came out smelling of roses. They couldn't get rid of her for many years. Now, a history lesson to the Conservative Party, if they need it from me, is that the only way they could get Maggie out was when she took a, a trip to France. And they got, to, they colluded together in the UK, and including Douglas Howe, which is their deputy, they all came together and got rid of her. They couldn't do it while she was in the country of the UK. And they're trying to do it right now while Boris is in the UK. They should have done it when he was in Ukraine the other day. That's how you deal with despots. doesn't matter which continent they're on. When they take a trip, you make it so that they can't come back as leader. That's, that's, that's known throughout history. So they had so many options to get rid of this despot, so many options to get rid of this man, and they haven't taken any of them. And now they're surprised that he's prepared to bring the ship down with him. He's prepared to bring the whole Conservative Party down with him. They're surprised by this. That is, that, that's the most surprising thing to me and to anybody who's got any common sense, how they can be surprised that this man would rather bring down his party than lose, lose power. Of course he would, that's what a despot does. That's what these people, kind of people do whether you call him narcissist nowadays or whatever word you want to use, Boris fits all of the criteria. Now, the truth is, yeah, on Boris's side, he is an amazing person from the point of being elected. I don't know how many conservative people could have actually won the mayor of London, since London 
is a, basically a Labour stronghold. And he actually went up against a Labour person and beat him. That in itself was remarkable. And that should have been a warning sign that this man can win elections against the grain. That would mean certain people who are undecided and Labour voters would have had to have voted for him in London, which is, again, remarkable. He was in Theresa May's government. He decided to resign from that government because he knew she was going down. And he didn't want to be there when she went down, a bit like what these two um, uh, cabinet members have done right now. They believe he's going down. They don't want to be in a party at the time that he goes down so that they can run for election or get their, their top position. It's all tactical. It's nothing to do with morals and we can no longer you know, stand by this and the truth is not being told. It's a lot of rubbish, absolute, complete foolishness. Especially the health secretary one. I think he's um, Javid, I think his name. He's he coming out with all this stuff about, you know, enough is enough and all this. It's absolute rubbish. The truth is, you weren't invited to the parties. That's why you didn't get a fine. You, you weren't actually invited and now you're upset. That's why, you, that's why you're, you've resigned against him. And the only reason you probably wasn't invited and Ruchi Sunak was he wasn't invited to the parties is because you probably don't sniff enough coke. That, I mean, it's a coke party. So, you know, if, if you weren't invited, it's just one of those things. It happens to me as well. So I, I don't take it personally. But seriously, Boris Johnson um, is a wounded animal right now. And like I said with Margaret Thatcher, the danger right now, if they don't get rid of him, is he could stir it up with Putin in order to do a Winston Churchill, to do a Margaret Thatcher, to actually get back into power through violent, through war. This is the danger of a wounded animal like, like someone like this. He could start to really ramp up the anti-Putin um, rhetoric in the UK and across Europe and try to get Putin right now into a, war, a wider war than he is right now in the Ukraine. Don't be surprised if it happens, you know. We saw it with Argentina and uh, Margaret Thatcher. That's how she ended up staying in power for so long. And they struggled to get rid she, she knocked out everybody who was, who was potential, that could potentially lead the country. She knocked them one after the other, one after the other. And eventually all we were left with was John Major. All right, don't laugh, but yeah, that's all we were left with, John Major. So Boris is doing the same thing. He's, he's got rid of Michael Gove. Anybody who he thinks that could be a danger to his position, he wants them out. And that's what he's going to do now. He's going to keep pushing them out, see if he can hold on to power. Because he actually knows that he's still more electable than the Labour leader. That's a, that's a, that's a, whether you want to you you um, doubt that or not, that's my view and my opinion. He's still more electable than the Labour leader. In fact, when you think about it, when the last Labour leader who, who went up against Theresa May, when he went up against Theresa May, after the by-elections, he did so well in the by-elections, people were patting him on the back and saying, we're going to beat Theresa May, we're going to beat Theresa May. And he did pretty well against Theresa May. Yeah, he did pretty well against Theresa May, considering where Labour was coming from. But he lost. But then she lost, because the Conservatives got rid of her. And then he had to go up against Boris. And Boris gave, gave him more than what they say in politics is a bloody nose. He wiped the floor with him. Literally wiped the floor with this man. And, and he had to go. And this is why we have this current Labour leader. And Boris, Boris head to head will destroy this man. I mean, Boris is on the ropes right now and this man can't lay a, lay a clean shot on him. Boris will destroy this man in an in, in, in election. So this is what Boris is relying on, trying to get to the point where he can somehow get to an election state and the people will have to choose between him and one of these other clowns. And I have to call them clowns because they really are not on the level. They're not electable. Regardless of them, it doesn't matter. What I've learned over the years about Boris is that most of the buffoonery, most of the foolishness that you see with Boris is actually made up. This is what surprised me from the time of the Mayor of London. This is the reason why he's been able to get elected and why he's able... He, he plays an absolute clown. Now, no one's not saying he doesn't have clownish issues on him, but he plays the clown, he plays the fool, but yet he always knows what he's doing. Always gets into, he gets into power and he's so electable. As, as I said, he's went against the grain in London, somehow found his way with basically no policies, doesn't even understand his own policies in his own party and he got to, the, got to the, um, the leadership of the Conservative Party and then won the election and won it hands down. So it comes a time when you have to start to realise this man is playing a very, very good game so far. We don't know where it's going to end, but he's playing a very good game so far. That's why I say... Look out on the horizon for any troubles across Europe because this man 
in, he's, you know, in history he knows that war gets everybody. Nobody changes a leader at a time of war. Nobody changes a leader at times of war. And if currently the UK was to get into a war, you couldn't change the leader. And that would, and you know, who knows where it would lead? But that that could be that could be his end game. I don't know. I have no idea. But history sometimes does repeat itself. I have to at this point um, commend Dawn Butler. I did a video on Dawn Butler. You can look back at it. Is this Dawn? It's called this, this Dawn Butler's finest hour. She's a black female Labour MP, who this current Labour MP pushed out completely, pushed her out into the back benches. Yeah, the current Labour MP. I don't want to mention his name. He's a clown, but. The current MP. This woman went into the House of Commons and called Boris a liar. And she was given the chance to take it back because you're not allowed to do it in the House of Commons. And she refused to take it back. Well, that, I said that was her finest hour. But see, d depending on what we've seen coming out of Boris and what's coming out of 10 Downer Street and the lies and lies and lies and lies, she should be actually the Labour leader. And the guy who's the Labour leader right now, he's an absolute joke. Absolute joke. The best person in his party, the strongest, the one thing you can be sure of about um, all of these politicians in the UK, they have no backbone. They have no backbone. They've had options to do things and they haven't done it. This man's got no backbone, that's why he can't take on Boris. That's why I said Boris is cleverer than you think, because Boris actually has got backbone. He has got backbone. He may be, you know, wrong about many things and he may be a liar about many other things, but he's got more backbone than all of the politicians in his party. And it's clear to see right now. None of them could do what he's doing. And none of them could stand up on a lie the way he lies, stands up on a lie. He's got more backbone than all of them. And Dawn Butler had more backbone than anybody in her party. And this is, this is where we're at. So, you know, um, kudos to, to Dawn Butler, a black female. Not surprising that she's the strongest um, MP on the other side. That don't surprise me. But anyway, that's another, that's a, that's a, uh, for, that's another day, another story altogether. But we can, I'll come back at this because by the time you've seen this, I'm sure events will have moved on drastically, maybe more resignations, maybe Boris himself will go. But I'll tell you one thing, I, I would be surprised if he actually does have the, um, the goal to actually... He just doesn't come, he doesn't have that in his character from what I can see. He's living in a world that he's made for himself, you know? So resignation would mean that you're living in a world that the rest of us are living in. He only ever resigned from Theresa May's government because he was positioning himself for power. He didn't resign for any moral reasons or anything like that. Very clever man. Anyway, take care. See you soon. Live for Love TV. This is Live for Love TV. Live for Love TV. Yes, I am. One step more. One step more. One step more. One step more. Until you reach your goals. One step more. Save them souls. This is Live for Love TV.